Hello, and a very warm welcome to this webcast service. I'm Melvin Wood, the Minister of Blowart Hill Church and Interim Moderator of St Columba Gallic Church in Glasgow, Scotland. It's good to have you with us as you join us for our online worship today. This is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, and today we continue our Lenten journey as we prepare ourselves for the great events of Holy Week and Easter. Today, I want to remember that even in the solemn penitential season of Lent, we can still be positive and look on the bright side. A couple of days ago, we received the news that churches will be allowed to reopen for Palm Sunday and Easter, provided that the COVID infection remains low. That alone is cause for celebration, but of course, every little step we take towards an easing of lockdown and getting back to some kind of normal life is welcome and a cause for joy. So here's a nice joyful psalm to start us off. So let's worship God with Psalm 89. Oh, greatly blessed the people are, the joyful sound that know. Let us pray. Living, loving, ever-present God, you journey with your people through every time and season. You remain faithful, dependable and true. When we look to you, often we are enabled to see the way ahead. You make the darkness light and you turn sorrow into joy. God of all the universe, you draw alongside us, weeping with us cradling our pain, reaching out to heal and to hold. And in our best times you laugh with us and share our relation. Your providence always bears a smiling face. Forgive us, O God, when we forget your love for ourselves and for others. Forgive us when we misuse or set at little value the gifts you have given. Forgive us when we fail to see our connectedness to you and to our neighbour. Bring us back to you. Stop us in our tracks and confound us with love until with better understanding we fix our eyes on you, God of our salvation. And all our prayers we offer through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray and to say these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Now a reading. Today it's from the Old Testament and from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the last chapter of Isaiah, chapter 66, reading verses 10 to 14. 
Let us hear the word of God. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm, and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Now a hymn, Peace is Flowing Like a River, based on that passage from Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 12. This hymn was written by that famous author, Anonymous. Pray, peace is flowing like a river. There's a trailer on BBC television just now. It shows a series of men, young men, talking about mental health and how it's okay to have mental health issues and to talk about them. I totally agree. Whether you're just an ordinary guy feeling the effects perhaps of the COVID pandemic or whether you're the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, it's okay to talk about mental health. What I do wonder is whether the broadcast media is the best place to do it. Whether it's the best place if you sense your mental health to be fragile and you're reaching out for support. For, as we've seen with the Sussexes and their recent interview, the response to that need 
might not be as supportive as you had necessarily hoped. And I question whether it's the best place if, like me and millions of others, you are on the receiving end. While anybody can be a victim of mental health issues, and I certainly don't consider myself immune, I've always regarded myself as being pretty resilient and I normally roll with the punches. Yet, the effect of those trailers on the BBC, repeated between every programme at peak time viewing just now, has been to make me feel somewhat depressed. And I start to question myself. Maybe I'm not as mentally strong as I thought I was after all, but I'm trying to suppress the demons that I ought to be talking about. I wonder if anybody else has felt that way or if it's just me. On top of the restrictions and pressures we've been living under for a year now, when many of us have had our routines disrupted, serious health anxieties, work patterns changed, unable to see our loved ones, unable to travel or to go on holiday, on top of feelings of lethargy from time to time, disrupted sleep, strange dreams, feeling emotional about happy days long in the past, to have those guys bursting uninvited into your living room, causing you to question your very sanity, is in my view not the most helpful thing at a time like this. Okay, I get the intention to raise awareness, to ensure nobody with serious problems keeps them bottled up, and to destroy some of the stigmas of the past. I get all that. But when it passes a certain point, it starts to do more harm than good. And I really worry that the high profile that mental health is getting on the media right now is a classic case of the pendulum swinging a bit too far the other way. So guys, let's try to get the balance right between being a caring, compassionate society, empathetic to the pressures felt by others, and being a self-indulgent society, wallowing in self-pity and constantly self-analyzing and making ourselves into hypochondriacs. And sometimes I wonder if the church is helping. I know a lot of my colleagues are feeling the strain just now. Some, for example, feel under pressure to continue their online services after we're allowed to go back to live services. <coughs> and they don't know where the extra time and energy to do both is going to come from. And even the traditional patterns of the Christian year might not be helping us right now. Here we are in the middle of the season of Lent, when the Church tells us that we're supposed to be solemn, reflective, self-denying, standing with the suffering Christ. In normal times that might be okay, but this year it seems hard. We feel like saying, enough of that already. So let me tell you something. God validates those feelings that we might have of enough already. And this church does too. This Sunday, if you didn't know, is called Laitari Sunday. For around a thousand years, Laitari Sunday has been a thing. Laetari Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, takes its name from the Latin word which begins the musical introit for that day in traditional services. Laetari means rejoice. And this Sunday is marked by a relaxation of the penitential character of the Lent season. The Church, in effect, is saying to you and to me, take a breather. Don't let the solemnity get you down. On this Sunday, we look with expectation to the great festival of Easter for which we have been preparing ourselves as a church during the Lenten season. Today, Laetari Sunday anticipates the joy of Easter, and it's meant to give us hope and encouragement as we slowly progress towards the greatest celebration of the Christian year. Father Matthew Ernest, who holds a doctorate in liturgy and who works in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York, 
has written an article to explain some of the theology and practice related to the celebration of Laetare Sunday. He explains that priests in his church may wear gold rose vestments on this day as a sign of joy. This is thought to stem from an ancient papal tradition of blessing golden roses which would then be sent to heads of state in Europe on the fourth Sunday of Lent. He goes on to suggest that today a family might choose to mark Lightari Sunday by having a Sunday brunch with roses on the table. Roses, as well, are just about the only thing that you can plant in the garden during these coldest months of the year. So today might be a good day to plant a rose bush. Finally, there is the medieval tradition of visiting one's mother church, the church in which you were baptised, on this day. OK, that's still a forbidden pleasure for another month or two, but it reminds us of the source of Mothering Sunday, which we also celebrate today in whatever way we can, as we honour our mothers and thank God for mother's love. So, in this Sunday in the middle of Lent, let's remember the words of Isaiah chapter 66. The theme of those last chapters of Isaiah can be summarised by saying, the bad times are behind us, or almost behind us. God is good. His holy city, Jerusalem, embraces you and cares for you like a loving mother. And the people of God are waiting expectantly, optimistically, for the peaceful times that the earlier part of Isaiah had prophesied. So let's take a moment to say, be happy, rejoice. What a great passage that chapter of Isaiah is for these times after a year of COVID stress. And the prophet is saying, okay, there's still a bit of gloom around us. We know, we've just watched the TV. But you know what? You can rejoice anyway. For thus says the Lord, I will extend peace and prosperity like a river. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for evermore. Amen. Let's draw together with God again in prayer. Let us pray. In every sadness, O God, you are there, holding out comfort. In every darkness, O God, you are there, holding out light. In every fear, O God, you are there, holding out hope. In everything, O God, you are there, holding out love. Through Jesus, your true word, speak to us that we might live abundantly. Speak to our minds, that we may see a truth beyond human knowledge. Speak to our hearts, that we may experience a joy beyond all other pleasures. Speak to our wills, that we may possess a discipline beyond human effort. Speak to our intentions, that we may hold others in our care and before you in prayer as indeed we do now. Through Jesus, your true word, speak to us, always and everywhere, that our lives may declare your glory. Amen. Now a hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. The tune is St. Christopher.
May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit go with you and remain upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to be part of this service. It's been good to have you with us joining in our worship today. If you want more information about our congregations, you can find it as always on our Blowart Hill website at www.blowarthillchurch.org and on our St Columba website. That's at www.highlandcathedral.org.uk. St Columba's also has a new Gaelic language Facebook page and the website has a link to that. Please, if you feel able, would you like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Maybe even copy a link into your own social media. And do remember our congregations in your prayers. Goodbye for now, stay safe and thank you for joining us.